Okay, we've got the June audit exam. We're on page 11. These are part two. The answers are done on a separate answer sheet. Question 52. The graph below represents the velocity of an object. It could be any object. And it's traveling in a straight line as a function of time. So it starts off at zero velocity, gets up to 10 meters per second. It does that for a while, and then it gets up to about 15 meters per second. The question is, determine the magnitude of the total displacement of the object at the end of the first six seconds. Maybe that's for a point. I just want an answer. So at the end of six seconds, how far has it gone? Total displacement. Well, the beauty of this, if we write velocity is distance over time, then displacement travel is velocity times time, which if we look at this as just a shape, base times height, uh, it's the area under this graph. If you went 10 meters per second for this amount of time, let's say two, four, so four seconds, you would travel 10 times four, or 40 meters. And that would be the area of this particular shape. The area of this would be half of base times height. So we get up to 10 in two seconds. So that would be 20 meters. Of course, we didn't go at 10 for the entire two seconds. We started at zero. And that would be 10 meters. Half of base times height. And for a total distance of 50 meters. Displacement would be 50 meters. So in our answer booklet, we go find question 52, and sure enough, they give you the units of meters. 50 meters is the answer. They don't want you to show your work there. Questions 53 and 54 are based on this information. 65 kilogram pole vaulter, so his mass is 65 kilogram, or her mass, wishes to vault to a height of... 5.5 meters. So we're going to go to a height of 5.5 meters, which is a pretty good height for a pole vaulter. Calculate the minimum amount of kinetic energy the vaulter needs to reach this height if friction is neglected, and all the vaulting energy is derived from kinetic energy. Show all the work, including the equation substitution with units, for two points. Uh, this is an equation of energy transfer. Mass is, what, 65 kilograms, going to a height of 5.5 meters. Let me check that. 65, 5.5. Well, in this particular problem, he must gain a potential energy to reach that height. And potential energy is equal to m times g times h, where g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So the potential energy necessary is going to be equal to, uh, I've already written the formula there, so I can just plug in here, 65 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 5.5 meters. Calculator time. The potential energy at the height of that launch would be 3,503.5 kilogram meters per second squared newtons times meters, a newton meter, or a joule. That's the potential energy necessary. If they're going to get all of that energy from kinetic energy, then the kinetic energy necessary would also be equal to 3,503.5 joules. Question 54. Calculate the speed the vaulter must obtain to have the necessary kinetic energy. Show all work and uh, substitution with units. Well, the kinetic energy is going to be 3,503.5 joules. The mass of the pole vaulter is 65 kilograms. And the formula for kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. Now we have to do the algebra to solve for velocity. 
So the first thing I do is get rid of the one half, and I do that by multiplying both sides by two. Two times kinetic energy is equal to mv squared. Two times kinetic energy divided by mass is equal to v squared. And the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by mass is equal to velocity. So I can write velocity is equal to the square root of two times kinetic energy divided by mass. So that's the square root of two times 3503.5 joules divided by 65 kilograms. So velocity would be equal to, get the calculator out. Now I already have my kinetic energy on my calculator for my last problem. So I multiply that by 2 divided by 65. Careful. And then I have to hit the square root button. So I've got a velocity of 10.38 meters per second. Moving right along.